setting up a simple HTTP server with Node.js and Express. Hello everyone, this is Ben Finkel and in this micro nugget, we're going to take a look at how to use Node.js in the library Express to create a simple web serving application that you can use for development purposes. Now Node.js is a really cool JavaScript interpreter. It's browser free and it works on any platform at all. We're going to use Windows in this micro nugget, but you should be able to tailor it to suit whatever platform you're developing on. Over the course of this nugget, we're going to install Node.js and we're going to set up the Express library with it. And we're going to go over how to configure an entire web server so that you can host API endpoints for testing your web development applications. All right, let's get started. All right, to set up our server, we're going to use two primary technologies. We talked about them during the intro. The first is Node.js. Now, Node.js is just a standalone JavaScript engine. Typically, JavaScript is executed inside your browser. It's part of a web page. So every browser, Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, etc., has a JavaScript interpreter built into it. Well, Node.js is a standalone JavaScript interpreter that we're going to download onto our client PC and execute without the trappings of a browser around it. It's going to be outside of a web page. And that allows us to do some really cool, powerful things with JavaScript that otherwise we wouldn't be able to do inside of a web browser. There's a ton of great different features and functions out there that people are using Node.js for. We are going to use the built-in HTTP server that it ships with in order to host our website. Secondly, we're going to use a third-party library built explicitly for Node.js, and that's called Express. Now, Express is a web application framework for Node.js, and it offers some advanced routing capabilities that aren't built into the HTTP server itself. Specifically, we want to use the API endpoints so that we can make AJAX calls against the server that we set up. Now briefly, just to talk about the steps we're going to cover in this nugget, we are going to download and install Node.js, very easy to do. Then we're going to prepare the project directory where we'll store our source code files for our server. We're going to make sure to check the path variable in Windows. This makes sure that Node is actually accessible inside of Windows. Then we'll create and set up a basic HTTP server that's going to handle some static HTML requests. Finally, we'll install Express using the Node Package Manager, NPM. And lastly, we'll modify our Express server so that we have those API endpoints exposed and we can access them with AJAX calls. OK, step one, installing Node. It's very easy to do. You're simply going to go to nodejs.org, select the Downloads link, and that'll bring you to this page that I'm right here. And then you're simply going to click the Install button. It's going to recognize which platform you're on, Linux, Macintosh, etc and it's going to download the right installation package. Here it's downloaded the MSI for Windows 8.1 since that's what I'm on. Go ahead and launch that installation package and it's going to walk you through the steps to install the software. You can install it anywhere you like. By default it goes into the program files. I'm going to shorten that up and I'm just going to put it into C colon backslash node. That'll be nice and easy to find. And then here on this options page you probably want to select everything but the important one is this add to path option right here. This is what's going to make sure that Node is accessible and launchable from anywhere in your command line, anywhere in your PC. Windows will be able to find the Node executable no matter which particular command line you're at. So that's important. You want to make sure that's checked. It's a little wonky. Sometimes it doesn't always install properly. Moving on here, just go ahead and let it install. And once it's done installing, we'll be able to go and look at the installation directory and see it. So here I've launched my Windows Explorer and I can go to the Node directory and here's all of the Node stuff including Node.exe. Now let's set up our project folder. We don't want to build projects right inside of the Node folder. We want to set up a totally different workspace for that. So I'm going to put right in the root of my G drive or my C drive just a folder named project. Go ahead and launch a command window here. And the way that I can test to see if Node was installed to my path environment variable properly is just try to run Node from this project folder or really any folder where node is not installed. If I get this option here, node is not recognized as a command, that means that Windows can't find the node executable. That means it wasn't installed to my environment variable properly. So step three, let's get that added in. I'm going to launch my system properties here. This is from Windows 8.1. It's in the control panel. You can always get to it in the control panel in any version of Windows. You can also get to it by right clicking my computer and choosing properties. I'm going to launch advanced system settings. And then from this systems properties dialog, I'm going to bring up my environment variables. Now I want to look down here at my system variables. That's where it's going to get installed. And I'm going to find path and click edit. Now I don't know what Microsoft was thinking, this little tiny box that has to store this big long list of paths. But what I like to do is simply control C, copy it to the clipboard, launch notepad and paste it in. 
and then I can see all the paths that are in my path variable. You can see it's very, very long. Now I need to get node added onto this. This is nothing more than a semicolon separated list of paths. I'm going to put c colon backslash node. Then copy that new string back to the clipboard. I don't need to save my changes. And I'm going to hit control V to paste it over that. You can see semicolon c colon node is now at the end of my path variable. I'll click OK. Close out of these dialogs and when I come back to my project folder, note I have to launch a new command window to get that path variable read. When I type node, you can see it gives me the node prompt. That's what this little bracket is. So now node is in my path appropriately and I can execute it from anywhere. Step four, let's set up a basic HTTP server in node. You can see I've dropped a file app.js into my project folder. If we take a look at that file, it's pretty straightforward. You can see that all we're doing is including a library called HTTP. That's what this var HTTP equals require does that imports the library into node.js. Then we create our server here with this little function and note that the response.end passes in hello world with a end line on it. And then lastly, we listen on port 8000 and I write out to the console the fact that I'm listening on port 8000. That's all I need to do. Just these few simple lines of code will get a simple HTTP server in node running. And if I go ahead and launch my command line here and I say node app.js, you can see it now says node.js server is running on port 8000. If I bring up my Chrome and I reload my page, you can see no matter what I choose here inside the address, it says hello world is the response to whatever it is that I'm looking for. So I have hello world responding to every single HTTP request. Simple HTTP server running on my PC. Now let's get Express installed and actually handle some routing. I'm going to install Express right into my project folder from the command line. Control C will stop my server from running. And I'm going to use the command npm, which stands for node package manager, space install, space express. And what that's going to do is that's actually going to download and install the express libraries from the internet into my project folder. It happens pretty quickly, and when it's done, I can take a look at my project folder. And you can see that there's now a node modules folder in here, and in there is Express. I'm also going to install a middleware library for Express called serve static, and that's going to be the same type of command, npm install serve dash static. Hit enter, and it's going to go ahead and download and install the serve static libraries as well. It's going to allow me to serve up static HTML pages with Express. Now let's take a look at how we modify our server to handle this. And very simply, I'm now using the express library instead of HTTP. And I create a new variable called app. I set it equal to express, open close parentheses, very easy to do. And then I say app.listen on, now I'm using port 8080 just to differentiate from my previous port that I was listening on. And the important line here is app.use. This is where I use that serve static library right here. And all I'm saying is that serve up files in the root directory statically. So if we take a look at my project directory, you can see that I've built a couple of files in here, index1, index2, and index3.html. And if we come here and open a new tab, launch our server on 8080, notice that it's bringing up my pages now. It recognizes index.html and automatically launches that on the root URL. But you can see as I click through each of my links, each page loads appropriately from that static directory that I set up. Lastly, if I want to handle some AJAX calls, all I have to use is this dot get function in Express, or its corresponding function dot post for post calls. And all I'm doing here is logging as a response into my console that AJAX get was called. Easy enough. Since I've made changes to my server, I need to restart my app, node app.js. There it's listening. Then if I come over here and I launch my page, I've added a quick little button onto one of my pages that will call that function doesn't do anything on the client side, but if I launch here, you can see that Ajax get was called, logged right into my console. So very quickly and easily, you can set up a server on your computer that's going to handle static pages, it's going to handle URL calls, whatever you need it to do for your development purposes. Super easy and quick to do. That concludes this micro nugget on how to install and set up Node.js in Express so that you can build a simple HTTP server for development purposes right on your PC. I hope that this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.